Hey, in this video I will show you the process of making these two lizards. I'm starting off with a foam base. So I just cut out different parts of foam and glue it together with hot glue into different shapes. And then I covered it with liquid latex. So I did it to match the actual animatronic and have them all have the same texture. After the latex is dried, I am beginning to paint them. I'm using regular acrylic paints and here I'm showing you the process of mixing the color. I never use the colors straight out of the tube. I always try to mix in a little bit of uh, complementary colors into it. If it's green, I try to add some red. Um, sometimes I would add a little bit of yellows and blues. And after that base coat is done, I am putting on a light wash of yellow. And then I'm just using a rag to um, slightly touch the surface and then you end up with this wash that has um, more concentrated spots and the same goes for the black paint I never use black paint straight out of the tube I always try to mix in a little bit of the base color so in this case I put in a little bit of green and I think I also mixed up some blue into it. And then onto the second lizard, I am slightly um, dabbing my brush on the surface to create this texture. I'm using less water in this case because I want to create this transition from that light color into the yellow. So I would recommend to think about the texture that you're trying to achieve and then you will know if you need to add more water in your paint or have less water. Now I'm showing how you see I have a little bit of black and I'm mixing in that yellow into it so that it's not straight black. I also added a little bit of brown and I think that helps with the colors not looking weird. Like if you take straight black or straight white, it will look off because in nature you never really have straight black or straight white. My camera went out of focus on this clip, but I'm basically using a very tiny brush and uh, putting in that pattern on the back. I collected a lot of uh, different pictures from different angles of the gecko lizards. Um, and I'm kind of combining them all in my head and using it for the pattern. They, they never have exactly the same pattern, but I use it just to get a general idea of how it looks on the back and the tail and the head. So this process takes some time, but you just gotta be patient and, you know, take it slowly, one dot at a time. Next, I used even smaller brush to put in some of the smaller dots here and there. 
I think it's important to remember about the variety and not have every single dot be the same size. So try to put some areas with bigger dots and some areas with a smaller. Also, a good advice is to remember to anchor your hand. So you see, um, I put my finger on the body and I use it to support my hand so it's not just floating in the air. So that helps a lot with being more precise. And I'm doing the same with the lighter color. So I'm just putting in some um, light uh, dots to bring in more contrast in my values. The process of painting the eyes is pretty much the same. Um, just use a small brush and be patient with it. The video is sped up about four times, so in real life I'm, I'm being much, much slower. You can always use a clean brush to um, clean up any strokes that you got on um, areas that you don't want to. And I'm doing the same for the second lizard. Again, I'm just trying to move slowly and carefully. And um, when I get some paint on other areas, I just clean up my brush and I wipe off that excess paint. And now I'll show you how I made the claws. So I use this material called epoxy sculpt. It's two parts that you have to mix together. And I also use petroleum jelly. And these are some of the sculpting tools that I use the most. So I take uh, two equal parts of a, part A and part B and then I mix it all together. I use petroleum jelly to put, put it on my gloves so that the epoxy doesn't stick to my gloves as much. And then you can use water to um, make it more sticky, to um, make it easier to adhere to other surfaces. And uh, water is also really good to use um, for smoothing out your um, textures when you work with epoxy sculpt. I like using X-Acto knife. Um, when I'm cutting off uh, pieces of epoxy and it helps to get those um, sharp edges and, and tiny de details in. So again, here just be patient, move um, at the speed that you're comfortable with. Uh, you have about half an hour working time with epoxy. It will dry in about two or three hours but it's really best to use when you just mix it up. So if you're afraid that you don't have enough time to work with it, um, I would recommend to mix it in smaller amounts and work with it, you know, one part at a time. Um, and then I move to the other lizard. Um, again, I'm just using an X-Acto knife to cut out those claws. And then you just set it aside and let it dry. After I painted the eyes, I used um, gloss varnish to make it more glossy. I have a bottle left that I um, used for my acrylic paintings, so I just I, I just used that for the eyes here as well. 
but you can use um, anything else that will make the texture look glossy. I think it brings like an extra level of realism. And you can see how it made it nice and glossy here. And I'm doing the same for the other lizard too. Uh, make sure that the paint underneath is completely dry before you put it on. And the last step was to make the bushes that I put all around the base. So I just cut out those little strips and then I'm using hot glue. So I'm putting a little uh, drop of hot glue and then I pinch the bush with my fingers and then I just hold it in for a few seconds. So just hold it until the hot glue is all dry. And then if you have any other extra pieces you want to glue on, just put a bit more hot glue on it and put it in. And then I just take it off and here's how it came out. And this is the final result. All assembled together. If you're curious to see how I made the base um, and the actual animatronic, the links for the part 1 and part 2 are going to be linked down below. Thank you all for watching!